two benzodiazepines, barbiturates, non-benzodiazepine sedative hypnotics, and alcohol have in common. I'll tell you what they have in common. Gamma amino butyric acid. That is the neurotransmitter that is inhibitory. It means it calms people down, sedates people. It also depresses their breathing. We'll get into that. So let's talk about these GABA drugs. That's what I'm talking about today. The benzodiazepines, let's just run through what are they. Well, we're dividing them up to short-acting, medium-acting, and long-acting. And based on how long they sort of survive or live or stay in your body is how we use them. For example, the, the very short-acting ones, ultra-short-acting. Xanax, which is alprazolam. Triazolam, which is used for sleep. Um, it's also called halcyon. Oxazepam, which is Cirax, which is used for sleep. And midazolam, which use an anesthesia to initiate anesthesia. What these short-acting drugs do, you could give them an... It, it causes amnesia. Anything that happens after you give that drug, they don't remember. So you give uh, triazolam, which is brand name Halcyon, you give it for sleep or midazolam to induce conscious or semi-conscious anesthesia. They can't remember anything. Go for a colon colonoscopy, an outpatient surgical procedure. They induce the anesthesia with Versa, midazolam. Knocks people out. The medium-acting drugs... Flunic, trazepam, rofenol, that's the knockout drug. Um, temazepam, it's used for sleep. Uh, what are some other ones? Uh, lorazepam and clonazepam. We use those for anxiety. So the medium acting drugs we use for anxiety with half-lives roughly 24 hours, under 12 hours uh, or less is usually the very short acting drugs. These are benzodiazepines. What are the long-acting ones? Well, to help you remember, the, the long-acting ones have long names. Librium, chlorodiazepoxide, which we use for alcohol withdrawal. So it slowly taper, tapers the body off alcohol. And it doesn't cause rebound anxiety or seizures because it lasts so long. Chlorazepate, which is transime. Diazepam. Diazepam is Valium. I grew up next to the Valium factor in factory in Clifton, New Jersey. Hoffman LaRoche built it in sometime like 1968. Just a fun fact, Valium was the most popular drug from like 1968 to 1982. The number one drug in America for anxiety. So the GABA system probably is in the receptors for that GABA inhibitory transmitters about half of the 86 billion neurotransmitters in your body. This gets really interesting. Other long-acting ones, uh, diazepam, Librium, chlorodiazepoxide, transine, and diazepam. Okay, the barbiturates, those are another class that affect GABA. Pentobarbital for anesthesia, secanol for anxiety, butalbital can be used in migraine medications, theopental for anesthesia. Those drugs are not used as much anymore because of their danger of overdose, respiratory suppression, lethality and withdrawal. They're very dangerous drugs. And as I get into how these drugs work, that'll be very interesting to see clinically why they're dangerous and how they actually work. The non-benzodiazepine sedative hypnotics, everyone knows Ambien, Zolpidem, Zopaclone is Lunesta, and Zalpon Sonata. There are other drugs in this class I'll talk a little bit about Remember Xyrum, sodium, oxybate? That was GHB, the knockout drug. It's, it's a liquid. It's very salty liquid. Other drugs which affect GABA, valproic acid, Devacote for seizure, uh, <laughs> Neurontin, which is gabapentin, pregabalin, uh, there's viagabin and teagabitril for seizures. I think I got those right. But anyway... Those are the drugs which affect GABA. Now I'm going to get an explanation. Um, 
what these drugs are used for. Mostly when you affect the GABA system, you treat, they're used as anticonvulsants like clonopin and benzodiazepine, phenobarbital, barbitol could use for seizures. They can be used for alcohol withdrawal like transine or Librium, the long-acting benzodiazepines. They can be used to induce anesthesia like midazolam. They can be used for anxiety like uh, lorazepam and clonazepam. They can be used for muscle spasms, like diazepam is most known for muscle spasms, because you have a lot of gas, uh, uh, gabapentin receptors in your spinal column. Uh, they can be used, did I cover them all? Anesthesia, spasticity, seizures, uh, prevent alcohol withdrawal, um, anxiety, and muscle spasticity. That, that's about what these GABA receptor drugs do. Now, here's where it gets interesting. I'm going to talk about some more GABA drugs. I'm going to get into the mechanism of action now. There are three GABA receptors, GABA A, GABA B, and GABA C. You need to know this because GABA A and GABA C are very similar. They're made of four proteins that are five proteins. See my five fingers, the five proteins? And let's say this is an axon. Dendrites, cell body, the axon sheath where the electrical charge goes down and the axon terminal spits out neurotransmitters which goes into the synaptic clep and stimulates other dendrites. Now it's not one neuron, one neuron, one neuron, it's millions upon millions upon millions. There's 86 billion neurons and they work by sending a neurotransmitter touches the, the back end of a, a neuron, the dendrite, sends an electrical signal down the axon where it releases a neurochemical, which then stimulates the next axon. But these, this is one neuron. So if you're looking at a neuron, that big white thing you see, you know, you steak, you'll see a white neuron. It's made up of millions of millions. So this is not one, 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 one. This one neuron goes to hundreds of thousands to millions. The GABA-A receptor. That's what we're talking about, which is five proteins, sits on the axon terminal, the axon sheath. This long, like it's like an electrical cord. It's, it's like an electrical potential to shut down this axon sheath. Well, it sits here. This is the receptor. It's five proteins, okay? And when you stimulate it, you open it up. When you open it up, chloride goes in. And what it does, that chloride goes down, it hyperpolarizes this, making the electrical signal go quicker. So when you give GABA or any GABA-like drug, it opens up these channels of these proteins. It sits in between these different subunits. There's two alpha, two beta, two gamma. So when you stimulate them, alpha one makes you sleep, alpha two causes anxiety, treats anxiety. So the alpha-1 is what those non-sedative anti, uh, non-benzodiazepine sleep drugs do, sedative hypnotics like Ambien, Solpidem, Lunesta, and Sonata, Azopaclone, and Zalplon. That's the alpha-1 subunit. It opens up and chloride goes through and it makes this wire, your nerve, hyperpolized, meaning electrical charges move slower. Well, you want, that's how it slows down the nervous system. Now, why am I going through this whole thing? Because there are different GABA-A, GABA-B, and GABA-C. The GABA-A has these five proteins. What stimulates them? There's five subunits, right? Two alpha, two beta, one gamma. The alpha one is stimulated by Ambien. So it opens up Ambien, puts you to sleep, but doesn't treat anxiety. The alpha-2 subunit is what all the benzodiazepines and barbiturates do, right? They open up this channel. So I, I went through my little hand and arm diagram. You get it. Nerve. This is a little uh, protein, which is a receptor that lets chloride ions flow into it, hyperpolarizing the neuron, thus slowing down transmission of that neuron. That's why GABA is inhibitory. Benzodiazepines go like this with the channel. They increase the frequency. So let's say it does, you know, five times 
a minute well xanax clonopin clonazepam alprazolam lorazepam they just increase the frequency barbiturates work differently they don't just work on the alpha subunit they go between the alpha and beta and they leave it open that's why it's more dangerous they leave the channel open for much longer durations so the benzodiazepines just increase the frequency of the opening the barbiturates leave it open and we realize that different subunits affect this GABA receptor differently. Now there's a GABA B receptor. Remember I said that? This receptor is not like the A and the C. It's just one big fat globule that sits there. And, and that doesn't bring chloride in, it sends potassium out, which is a positive charge. So the more negative the neuron, the less, the more hyperpolarization, the less the charge goes through it. Follow me, I hope I'm not losing anyone. So now, when you do that with the GABA B, there are drugs out there that do that. I had one patient, he was using Phenobut, which was from Russia. It's illegal, you can buy it on the internet, but what that does is send positive charge out through the GABA B receptor. You could get all sorts of dizzy, fatigue, respiratory depression, confusion, delirium. He did. So that GABA B receptor works differently. Now, other drugs which hit that GABA B are propofol. It hits a little GABA A, but it's mostly B. The Michael Jackson drug, remember he put himself to sleep with that? Um, baclofen is a muscle relaxant that hits the, the, the GABA B. They're not all alike. So the GABA B sends potassium out, GABA A brings chloride in. This isn't a lock and key type thing. With the benzodiazepines, when you stimulate the alpha-2 subunit, it sits between it. It's not like you hit a receptor and you make this happen. It only works as a GABA modulator, meaning it makes GABA more attracted to the receptor. It doesn't lock and key. It may hit the side of the protein, so then GABA wants to get on that receptor. It's not a lock and key. It's not one for one. Xanax may affect it here, and it just makes that GABA want to stimulate and stay on there longer. So now we have alcohol. What's going on with alcohol? Alcohol, the mechanism is, is not exactly known, but it affects GABA at the GABA-A receptor, and it makes GABA want to come onto that receptor. It modulates it so you have more inhibition, but it does something else. It also prevents the release of glutamate. And glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter. Now, when you have alcohol and you have benzodiazepines on board, because they work in different mechanism of actions, it's synergistic and the effects on respiratory depression, drowsiness, fatigue, muscle coordination are, are dramatic. You know, I've had a lot of people die. You wanna die, mix alcohol with a benzodiazepine, with a barbiturate. There's another drug which affects this whole system. Remember GHB, sodium oxybate, and that affects GABA. It's a salt, it's a liquid. I've had people use it. It's used for narcolepsy to prevent muscle weakness during the day. There's other things that affect GABA. Lyrica, Neurontin, Gabapentin, Pregabalin. There's two uh, other nor uh, other anti-seizures that affect GABA. Now, here's some interesting thing about affecting this receptor. All these drugs that I mentioned are synergistic with alcohol. You drink alcohol, you could die because the effects are extreme. What are the effects of benzodiazepines, barbiturates, the non-benzodiazepine sedative hypnotics? You get drowsy, respiratory depression, you can't breathe, muscle coordination, fatigue, delirium, dizzy, not good. Do not mix these. Now I was working in the emergency room in New York City for years, and when someone came in and they had too much gamma, gamma stimulation with too much Zanny bars, that's the street name, alprazolam, lorazepam, clonazepam, diazepam, they took too much of that drug and they mixed with alcohol, there's a drug that can pull those, the GABA right off the receptor. It competes for GABA at that receptor and it locks onto the receptor and kicks off the GABA. It's called flumazenil. 
we use it in the emergency room, you give it to someone and they could be like all drugged out. They're like this. You give them that flumazenil within a, quickly, within 30 minutes. They're up, they're angry, they're anxious, they're miserable. But you've completely stopped the GABA receptor activation. Now, when you're doing anesthesia, you could give midazolam, which is a short-acting benzodiazepine, and you could immediately stop it with flumazenil, the anti-GABA. That's the story of the GABA-A system, the GABA-B, and the GABA-C. These are dangerous drugs, so everyone needs to be aware. I have a lot of patients. I've lost some people who mix these drugs with alcohol. Under no circumstances do you take a benzodiazepine, a barbiturate, or those non-benzodiazepine sedative hypnotics with alcohol. Please, don't do that. Other risks of these drugs, I mentioned some side effects, but short-acting ones like that I discussed, alprazolam being the biggest one, but triazolam, oxazepam, and midazolam cause rebound anxiety. What does that mean? In between doses, it wears off, so you get anxious, so you need more and more of the drug. These drugs develop tolerance. After taking them for a while, you need more and more of the drug for the same effect. That's why people become tolerant and need more and more. Same with alcohol. You drink a martini every day for a month, and then you need two martinis for the same effect. That goes on with benzodiazepines, barbiturates, and the non benzodiazepine set of hypnotics. You have that rebound anxiety phenomena. You also, with these ultra short acting, because they leave your system so quickly, you can have seizures upon withdrawal. They're extremely dangerous. Mixed with alcohol, all of them can cause respiratory depression and death. Not to mention, you take them with alcohol, your coordination, you become dizzy, fall and hit your head, or make no sense and can't think clearly because they cause memory and cognitive slowing. There's something else about this system. This is the most important point of this talk. The GABA system, unlike the opiate system, does not rebound. Meaning, once you've intervened with artificial GABA, with benzodiazepines, barbiturates, even the drugs like Ambien, the, the non-benzotine non -benzotine set of hypnotics, The GABA is so used to being lured in or being seduced into hitting that receptor by these artificial drugs that you're putting in your system that when the, you pull away the artificial drugs, it never is interested in that receptor like it used to be and won't stimulate it. That means the GABA system doesn't come online again and work as well. There's some process that takes place where the body just becomes less sensitive and less stimulated by GABA. So you've been, if you've been on Xanax or Clonopin for 10, 20 years, and you stop, you could never be the same again because that GABA system doesn't return to its normal state. It'll always feel less than from that point forward. Anyway, I talk more about this in my blog, dragresti.com, and I talk more about this uh, on, my, on my YouTube channel and other videos. Thank you, Dr. Mark Agresti. Bye.